How do I know you? <laughs> You're my beautiful granddaughter. Third, third in line of six granddaughters that I have. And I'm your grandmother, Billy. I am your father's mother. <laughs> what would you say the importance of social media is now? I believe that social media has uh, expanded the ability to, uh, to for communication from someone in sitting in Oklahoma and someone clear across the uh, the world. Your father, uh, your father was born in uh, in Morgan City, Louisiana, and we were in the oil business, and we were stationed over in Dubai, which is in the United Arab Emirates. Um, the only way I could communicate with my mother or anybody abroad was I had to either telegraph it or I had to write it in a letter and send it. Nowadays, if I was living in Dubai, I could simply take your phone and put it on now what they call face, you know, Facebook, Facebook <laughs> which I do not have Facebook, you know, or we could do FaceTime and I could, I could send my mother and talk to my mother uh, you know, and show her pictures of her grandsons, mm -hmm. which for uh, only um, 30 days out of a year where we, uh, did we come home and were she able to see her grandsons mm -hmm. or I was able to see anybody. Um, and so that I think is the most blessed thing about uh, social media that I see a benefit of. Do you use social media? You just told me to use Facebook, but no, I don't Snapchat. use Facebook. I don't use Snapchat. I don't use. What about for your businesses? Do you uh, use uh, it to promote? Um, yes, we use it to promote, but um, you know we have a we have a a, a page on, uh, but we don't use Facebook or any of that nature because my opinion of Facebook is it's a gossip column. And people, it, yes, Facebook is used um, in a sense of good ways, but I believe that it there's really more bad used of it than there is good used of it. Yeah. Um, back when I was growing up, uh, bullying wasn't really, if it happened, it, it really wasn't, um, it wasn't spread all over, you know, creation, and uh, I think that Facebook encourages bullying yeah. because it's a lot easier for someone to say something to someone behind a screen than it is in face to face. What is life like before social media? Well, uh, you know what Atari is? Nope. Nope. <laughs> well, uh, we uh, we had we were limited. We were limited. Uh, have you ever been to a game room where you had, um, I will show you one thing, just a minute. <laughs> you see this? Yes. This, <laughs> this was our, this was our social media. This was our, our games that, uh, Pac-Man, Atari, that's, that's what we, that's, that's, that's what we used to play. Uh, I had no phone. What year were you born? 2000. The phone? There's flip phones. There, no, there was no, and when your papa and I were dating, um, a friend of mine that we went uh, on a vacation with, he had a bag phone. It was about this big and this wide, but you really couldn't use it until you got, you had to get into a certain area, and it was really, really expensive. That was my first experience with a phone. <laughs> and that was in 1985. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Yeah. How do you even use those? And when I was growing up, uh, we, we, our only way of communication is we had to, um, we had to uh, find a phone booth, uh, which was on, used to be on all corners of everywhere, and uh, you'd have to take a nickel. Uh, and then it got to be a dime, and then I'm, anyway, and you had to have a nickel, and that was the only way to call home, and uh, that was, that, that was just how we communicated. If you were, if you were waiting for someone to call you, you had to sit by a rotary phone uh, at the house and wait for someone to call. 
And as I got as I got into the working uh, business, and uh, it wasn't until uh, my next in the nineties, uh, then I had a pager, and I'd carry it with me. And if somebody uh, needed for me to call back to the office, they would dial nine one one. And uh, that and so I still would have to pull over if I was at a customer's house. Then I would ask to use their phone because they had what was referred to now as a landline, mm -hmm. and uh, or I would have to pull over at a and find another find a phone to use to call. So it wasn't until um, in see your dad and I. I left the bank in uh, 96 and your dad and I, uh, with the help of your dad, started the sod farm in uh, 97 and I think we've had an AT&T phone, uh, you know, since about then, but uh, it, they were really, 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 you think the phones are expensive now, um, if you look at inflation, they were really costly, but, uh, you know, that's improved, you know, as technology's improved. Um, and then in our, in the business wise, um, you actually made what I call, refer to sales calls. You would go to, um, the, whoever you, your customer's office and introduce yourself, uh, and, uh, and, you know, and build a relationship with that customer that you wanted to do business with. Uh, we did very little, there was social media had there was no facebook there was nothing you know and businesses as uh, as social media has grown um you know so as the use of it in the business side of uh, of it grown and i guess the biggest thing that i like advantage uh now is uh your text messages and your emails uh now i i don't have to um uh wait you know to get a um you know, a contract or a, a letter or something, uh, you know, through the mail. Now, you know, they can scan it and email it to me and I can have it in a split second if I need it. And so, really for businesses, especially a small business, uh, it's in, it's, it's help us, it's help people, small businesses compete with the larger businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, but then on the other hand, uh, you know, when I was a broker, uh, the question with the ask, uh, you know, to a customer, uh, why do you do business with a certain, you know, person? And uh, the answer was always, almost 99% always, that um, because they like that individual. And uh, and I guess that's, you know, in e you know, in emails and text messages, that can be construed wrong. Um, but I, the technology, as far as the small businesses, has really helped uh, a lot for them to, you know, for us, you know, for us as a small business to compete. Yeah. Do you think life would be better with it or without it? Social media, not more of like it would not. It, it, it would depend on which social. When I say social media, I mean like Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, anything like that. I don't like think that. any advance. I, I don't think. It's made those those I those social medias have made uh, you know lots of people millionaires, mm -hmm. and I guess in that sense, it, yeah, there it's you know it's an advantage uh, because it costs less to start a business, and uh, and people uh, who are gifted and talented, uh, it's a great advantage to, you know in that form. Do if you want to dissect each one of those things, I think that um, a lot of those can, uh, are just not really for use in business um, because they're just, they're play items, they're not, you know, but yet again, they're, they're ways for, um, for people to manufacture, to advertise this, and social media from, uh, through ch through children that one child that is like you know nine or ten years old is a multimillionaire because um, because of these toys 
and I don't know what's fascinating about watching someone play one of these, but people are fascinated by that. <laughs> and so in that sense, um, if uh, it's that's why I mean it's easy for people that have limited resources to start a business. Mm -hmm. So when you need to interview somebody to hire them for your business, would you say that when you first started off and were interviewing people and people now, like, has the way they communicate changed in a negative way since social media has came in, like, just the way they talk to you? Yes. And how? Well, um, well, for one thing, you not myself, but lots of businesses, only look at the paper interview. I, my personal self, can tell a lot from uh, somebody that I talk to face to face. And I see that um, for somebody that has a disability or does not communicate well on uh, paper would come across better face to face than if somebody just looked at you know, looked at their application or looked, you know, uh, you know, whatever they got, you know, on the, um, you know, uh, application. Yeah, across their application. But I like the face-to-face -face interview, uh, and I still do. I still do that. I, I, I do a lot of that, uh, more so than looking at applications, uh, you know, on just on the internet by somebody sending it to me. So, what's your opinion on? Uh, doing online interviews, do you think there's a difference between interviewing someone on person than doing it over, like, FaceTime? Well, I will ask you, are you more comfortable talking to someone face-to-face -face or online? <laughs> Probably face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people are, uh, that uh, are that way, and so, um, I think, uh, for, uh, I'm more, as like I said, I'm just old-fashioned. I'm just more comfortable talking to you face-to-face -face and interviewing uh, than I am, uh, though I know that, in, you know, industry's going that way, mm -hmm. and it's probably, like I said, if you're wanting a job like your uncle looks, you know, out of Oklahoma for a position that he does, which is in media, then that's how he that's how he gets his interviews. Mm -hmm. That's that's you know, but, but I, and I understand that and that so therefore um, that's you know a benefit to him. What gave you the idea to start your own company with my dad? Well, actually, your dad kind of pushed me into it. Really? Mm -hmm. He um, he was looking um, again. If you know your dad. Um, He's is one that comes across a whole lot different um, person to person than he does over the phone or in a in an interview that would be online. And he's really a uh, so when he was searching, uh, college was not something that he liked, even though he went to the junior college. And so he uh, worked for a company that was out of Tulsa that had uh, a, a sod farm and. Your papa being a farmer, we had a access to land, which is uh, to start one, and would and made a whole lot more sense. And so your dad, so we started really small. We started with only uh, you know 20 acres, mm -hmm. and uh, then now we you know now we have over 300. Oh wow! Yes. So you know, and which is and then we probably uh, purchased grass from uh, other farms. You know, uh, to you know, equal that. You know, we we uh, so that's that's how we. You know, that your dad really you know said, Mom, you know how to, let's do this, and I did the business side of it. Your dad did the sales side of it, and um, that's that's how we started it. How did you grow your company without social media? Mm, face to face. And I am, and I am, uh, I am, I am a minority-owned business. I'm a woman-owned business, and uh, the uh, government is really pushing uh, because small businesses, as I said uh, before, social media and all of that had really a disadvantages with larger businesses, 
and especially minority-owned businesses. Uh, and minority does, that doesn't mean only women, but of all all social, you know. And so uh, they really started pushing um, for um, government as the state, as cities, and even larger businesses to do uh, to hire minorities uh, to do work for them. And so uh, when that did, that was really an advantage. That is one advantage that I that I had as being we were, a, you know, I was a female-owned business. Mm -hmm. This kind of goes with the question I just asked you, but how hard was it to start the company? And what struggles? Financially, it was really difficult mm -hmm. um, because um, uh, banks, and even more so now, uh, are, uh, we had, we had not a great deal of money to start it, but yet we did have an advantage because we did have the land to use, which that is probably one of the biggest costs of starting the business. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, as I said in my last response, uh, the um, the government was pushing, you know, states and, and companies to encourage minority businesses. So that with that alone. Uh, helped greatly to secure contracts yeah. and with those secured contracts I was able to you know to get bank loans and uh, then when I got bank loans I was able to secure credit and secure and buying equipment. So if you were to start your company, let's say that you didn't start it then and if you'd waited and started it now with there being social media and everything different now, do you think it would be, it would be easier or harder and why? I, I think that's a good question. I think about it. I think um, the business uh, plan uh, I would change somewhat uh, with structure. There's more competition now than there was when I started. So in that form, it would be harder. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, but social media um, really. Our business comes a lot now because we've been in it for over 20 years. Uh, people know us, uh, and uh, we um, and social media helps in smaller markets uh, us because people do not when they're looking. When I say smaller markets, I'm I'm speaking of. You know, El Reno is a population of about 27,000 people. Um, and uh, so if you go to, say, uh, you know, 20 miles to the west of us, where there's only like, you know, you know 10,000, 15,000 people, uh, and people go to look for somebody to do our type, our line of work, they will look on social, you know, they will look on social media to do, you know, to do that. Mm -hmm. And when I mean social media, I'm not meaning TikTok or any of that. I'm, I'm speaking of, you know, a Facebook page or, um, or a web page. Yeah. They'll, they'll search, you know, they'll search for those, those types. So in that form, yeah, it would, it would, it would help greatly. Mm -hmm. What tips do you have to start a company and it be a successful company? I would just t warn um, people your age, don't put anything on social media, Facebook including or anything else that um, you, and that this is a negative and uh, can't express it more to my grandchildren, uh, is that when you go to, even when you go to look for a professional job, they automatically will search their social media forms uh, to see what you have posted mm -hmm. and that is going to follow you around and haunt you your entire life mm -hmm. and and that in my opinion is the way people have uh, to um, discard your application mm -hmm. uh, not to give you a loan to get money yeah. to get credit uh, and um, and that and and so, and my best advice is, you know, to put money aside, regardless whether it's, you know, if it's, you know, $5 a week, $5 a month, 
the miracle of compounding uh, is, uh, you know, it was what I call, I tell people, the rule of 72, that you take what you earn from that money and you divide it by 72, and it tells you how long it takes for that money to double. So if you just do $5, just don't eat at McDonald's, you know, one week and put that money aside and don't touch it. And, um, and banks look at that. They look at how good, you know, a saver you are. It's a, it, it's a little stuck nest pile that you have when you go to, to want to start a business. Mm -hmm. And uh, have a business plan. Know where you want to start out and where, what is your ultimate goal in, in that business. Uh, is that ultimate goal to take care of your family, to, and to, uh, uh, to retire debt, to retire because you, you want a choice uh, to work if you want to work. Not a choice of working because you have to work. 